Hi everybody, welcome back to Educating Adventures. My name is Sarah and today we're gonna kind of mix things up a little bit. I know a lot of the time here on Educating we talk about amazing animals, but today we are gonna be talking about plants and all of the incredible adaptations that they use to survive in their environment. So let's go ahead and jump in learning all about plants. When we think about plant adaptations, we have to think about it a little bit different than animal adaptations because plants can't really move around and change their behaviors. So when we're talking about plant adaptations, we're talking about things that plants have that help them to survive in their particular environment, that helps them to overcome any challenges that they might face where they live. So I want you guys to think for just a second, what are some of the challenges that plants might have to evolve or adapt to overcome over time? This is a good time for you guys to stop the video and discuss as a class what type of challenges you think that plants have to overcome. All right, are you ready? So the first challenge that comes to mind for me is water. If we think of places like the desert, one big challenge they have to overcome is that there is not a lot of water. And we know that plants need water to survive. If we think about somewhere like the rainforest, one issue they might face there is that there is too much water. When water sits on a plant's leaves or branches, that can cause diseases or fungus, which does not help a plant survive. So having too little or too much water can be kind of challenging. Temperature is also something that plants have to deal with. Whether it's really, really hot or really, really cold, plants have to learn how to survive in that temperature. We might also think of light exposure. In some places there is really harsh, bright light. There is so much light that the leaves can burn. In other places, it's kind of dark and plants struggle to get the light that they need to survive. One other big issue that they face is with nutrients. Nutrients are like plant food and most of the time they get nutrients from the soil. When there's not enough nutrients to go around for all of the plants, they can struggle to grow and survive. One last issue that animals have to deal with in order to survive are herbivores. They need to look out for animals that want to eat them. Being eaten is not good for a plant, so they have adapted many different ways to avoid becoming lunch for lots of different species. Let's start off with these rain adaptations. So we're gonna start with the desert, somewhere that does not get a lot of rain. So when it does rain, it's really important that these plants are able to absorb that water as fast as they can. And to do that, a lot of the times, they have wide, shallow roots. And those wide, shallow roots are able to absorb a lot of water before that rain evaporates, before it turns into water vapor and goes back up into the clouds. So wide, shallow roots we might find on a saguaro cactus. Saguaro cacti have roots that are as wide as they are tall. So if the cactus is 20 feet tall, they have roots going out in every direction for 20 feet. That helps them absorb a lot of water. Then plants need to be able to store that water to use during the times of the year when there's not a lot of water around. So we might think of the baobab tree, which we would usually find over, we might picture on the African savanna, and these trees have gigantic trunks that are able to store huge amounts of water that the plant can use during a drought, during the time of the year when there is not a lot of rain. Plants also have to worry about that water escaping from their leaves or their stems, mostly their leaves. So in order to kind of reduce that water loss through their leaves, plants in the desert have teeny tiny little leaves. If we think of a creosote bush, 
Creosote bushes have tiny leaves. That means there is less space for that water to escape from. The creosote bushes leaves are also covered in a waxy coating and that waxy coating helps trap some of that water inside the leaf, again, to prevent that water from escaping. We said they want to store a lot of water. Now, if we think of plants in the rainforest where the issue is too much water, we said that plants in the rainforest do not want water sitting on their leaves or their branches that can give them all sorts of diseases. So plants in the rainforest have developed leaves that have a drip tip. Almost every type of tree in the rainforest, their leaves come to a point, which allows the water to drip right off of those leaves because we don't want the water sitting up there. Just like the plants in the desert who have the waxy coating to trap in water, Plants in the rainforest have a waxy coating to help that water slip right off of the leaves. So the wax on the leaves repels water. And so by doing that, it helps the water fall right off the leaves. They even sometimes have a waxy coating on their bark, on their branches and their tree trunk. This again, the trees do not want to be absorbing water through that bark, so the wax helps to repel some of that water and helps it slip right off the trees. We also said that plants have to deal with really extreme temperatures, sometimes really hot, sometimes really cold. And we're also gonna kinda talk about the light issues in this. So we said some places get really extreme harsh light and other environments don't get a lot of light. So we're gonna think about our desert again. And in the desert, we know that temperatures can get really hot. We also know that there is really harsh sunlight. So in the desert, we might find plants like a cacti, and cacti are also really good at storing some of that water, like we mentioned before, but cacti are also covered in spines. And those spines are modified leaves that actually help to shade the cactus from some of that harsh light. And by shading some of that harsh light, it helps to keep the plant a little bit cooler. Some plants in the desert also have leaves that are light in color. Having light colored leaves, when the harsh sun shines down, some of that light can bounce right off of that leaf because light colors reflect sunlight. So that again helps to keep them kind of cool because they're not absorbing light and it helps them survive that extreme sunlight shining down. Plants are really vulnerable when they're young too. So some young plants use the help of a nurse plant, which is a bigger, well-established adult plant, like a tree of some kind. So little baby plants will grow underneath one of those big trees in order to use their shade and maybe even steal some of their nutrients or water supply from the soil. Plants that grow in the tundra, which is a freezing cold environment, it's really hard for plants to live there. The soil is frozen, there's not a lot of sunlight, and it's super cold. So the tundra is a harsh place for plants, but some of the adaptations that they use to survive the cold and survive with little light is they're able to become dormant during different times of the year. And basically what that means is they go to plant sleep. So during that time of the year, they are not growing, which means that they're not using any energy and they're kind of just holding on, waiting for the spring or the summer for when they can grow again. Unlike plants in the desert who have light colored leaves, plants in the tundra have dark colored leaves. This helps them to absorb sunlight, which gives them more light, which they need to grow and survive and can help keep them warm because they're absorbing some of that light. Plants in the tundra also grow low to the ground. Because there's not a lot of plants in the tundra, the wind whips really, really hard. So if plants were big and tall, they would be exposed to a lot of that harsh wind. So instead, they grow low to the ground and that way the wind can kind of go right over them. Now let's think about nutrients. Some ecosystems are very lush. They have lots of plants. So we would think there are a lot of nutrients. 
while other ecosystem there's not that many plants so we would assume that there's not too many soil nutrients so if we think of the desert or the tundra where there are not a lot of nutrients in the soil we know that the plants are kind of spaced out there's not a lot of competition between plants for the nutrients in one area because they all kind of grow a little bit away from each other. That way there's not a lot of competition. If we think of the rainforest where we would maybe expect there to be a lot of nutrients, well, that nutrients is actually only in the very top layer of the soil. So having deep roots does not really help a plant in the rainforest. Just like we said, the saguaro has wide, shallow roots to help it absorb rainwater. Plants in the rainforest, a lot of the times, have wide, shallow roots to help them absorb nutrients because that nutrients is in the very shallow parts of the soil. And because there are so many plants in the rainforest that are all competing for these nutrients, some plants have gotten creative. A bromeliad actually sometimes doesn't even grow in the soil. Sometimes it grows on tree branches and the roots, they don't pull nutrients from the soil. The plant is actually able to pull nutrients from the air. So that helps them to avoid some of that competition with all the other plants. But even cooler than a bromeliad is a pitcher plant. Pitcher plants produce a really sweet smelling nectar in their leaves, this really yummy stuff that attracts lots of different types of insects. And sometimes when the insects come over to investigate, they might slip and fall into the pitcher. And then, believe it or not, the pitcher plant eats the bugs. And any nutrients that were in that bugs goes into the pitcher plant. So the pitcher plant actually gets nutrients by eating little animals instead of competing with other plants for nutrients in the soil, which is kind of crazy. The last challenge that we said plants have to overcome is being eaten. In almost every environment where we find plants, we also find herbivores or animals that eat plants. So they have developed some adaptations that help them to avoid being eaten. If we think back to that creosote bush that we mentioned that lives in the desert, we said it has that waxy coating that helps trap in water, but that waxy coating also does not taste good. So there are just a couple animals that are able to eat the creosote bush, even though it doesn't taste very good. If we think of the acacia trees that live on the African savanna, we know that giraffes and elephants love to eat acacia trees, but those leaves can actually become poisonous once they start being eaten. The tree kind of creates these poison once it senses that there is danger. And not only does that tree itself become poisonous, it also sets out a gas that tells all the other acacia trees in the area that there's danger and to start creating those poisons as well. So giraffes, they cannot feed on the same acacia tree forever. They eventually have to move upwind to where there are new acacia trees that haven't started to release that poison yet. The last and probably most obvious way that plants avoid being eaten is by being covered in thorns. If we think back to that cactus that we mentioned before that uses its spines to help shade the rest of the plant, those spines also help it avoid being eaten. Most animals do not want to take a big bite into something covered in spines, but there are a couple animals that have developed adaptations that help them to navigate those spines. The acacia tree is also covered in spines and the giraffe uses its super long tongue to reach in between all of those spines to pull off of the leaves. So even though the plants are adapting to overcome all of these challenges, sometimes the animals are adapting too in order to be able to eat these plants. So now we know that it's not just animals that are adapting, it's plants too. All living organisms need to adapt in order to be able to survive in their environment. 
I hope you guys had a great time learning about plants today and now you can look at some different plants and think about exactly what kind of amazing things that they do to help them survive. We have way more information about plants and their adaptations on our website at zucating.com. The link is below. Feel free to go check that out and I hope we see you guys next time at our next Educating adventure.